Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, we are going to learn about the valuation of equity shares. Till now, we have done the concepts of valuation of equity shares with the help of dividend. And we learned that whenever we are going to value the equity shares, the dividend plays the important role. So we have also learned that the valuation of equity shares depends on the type of dividend. We can have a constant dividend or we can have a growth dividend. And if we are going to have a growth dividend, it is divided into two parts. One when the growth rate is constant and the second when the growth rate is variable. So today we are going to do the illustration when the growth rate is variable. Now we have also learned in the previous videos that when the growth rate is variable, it means that throughout the life of the equity share, the company is going to change the growth rate. That means throughout the life of the equity shares, the growth rate is not same. It can change maybe one time or maybe two times, maybe 10 times or maybe n number of times. So whenever the growth rate is changing, we name it as a variable growth rate. Now the question says that Mr. X receives a dividend of rupees 10 per share. Now in this question, I am saying that Mr. X is receiving right now. So that's why it receives. So right now in today's state, that means at zero, the dividend rate is 10. That means the company is paying the dividend of 10 right now at the zero time period. Your dividend is 10. His required rate of return is 9%. That means R is 9%. You have to calculate the value of share if the growth rate from year 1 to 3 is 10%. That means from 1 to 3 years, the dividend will grow by 10%. In 4th and 5th year, the dividend will grow by 11%. And in the 6th year onwards, dividend will grow by 12%. That means after 6th year, the growth of dividend will be constant indefinitely. After 6th year, the growth rate of dividend is not going to change. Now, first of all, whenever such type of questions are there, first of all, you have to calculate the dividend that you are going to receive at the end of 1st year, at the end of 2nd year, at the end of 3rd year, 4th year, 5th year and 6th year. So, I can say that you have to calculate dividend paid till that year in which your growth rate of dividend becomes constant. In this question, if you will observe, my growth rate is becoming constant 6th year onwards. So, I am going to calculate dividend till 6 years. I can calculate dividend beyond 6 years also, but there is no use. Uh, till 6 year, if you have calculated the dividend till 6 years, you can value the current price of the share. Now, we have already learned that how the dividend is calculated for the different years. If I am going to calculate dividend for the first year, so the formula will be, if I am going to calculate D1, so formula will be D0 bracket 1 plus G. where G will be your growth rate. So the similarly, I have written it over here. I'm going to calculate dividend at the end of year one. My D0 is 10 and my growth rate is 10%. So instead of 10%, I have written 0 0.10. So if you are going to calculate it, your answer will be 11. So my D1 is 11. Similarly, I have to calculate D2. If I'm going to calculate D2, D2 will be D1, so I can say it will be D1 bracket 1 plus G. So whatever is a previous dividend that you have received, the growth rate is applicable on that particular dividend. So my D1 over here is 11. So that's why I have written 11. 1 plus my growth rate is 10%. So I have written 0 0.10 and your answer is 12.1. So second dividend is 12.1. Third dividend will be whatever you have received in the second year plus 10% of that. So in the second year, I received 12.1 plus 10%. So my third year dividend is 
3, 1. Now after third year, in fourth and fifth year, the growth rate is changing. It's becoming to be 11%. So now in the fourth year, whatever you have received at the end of third year, you have to multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.11. That means whatever you have received at the end of third year, you will get that amount plus 11% extra of 13.31, which will comes out to be 14.477. Now in the fifth year also your growth rate is same as 11%. So in the fifth year whatever you have received at the end of fourth year plus 11% of that. So it will become 16.39. Now in the sixth year your dividend rate is again changing. Now it's 12%. So in the sixth year whatever you have received at the end of fifth year plus 12% of 16.39 which becomes 18.36. Now these are the different dividend that I am going to receive at the end of different time periods. So what I have to do, we have also learned that whenever we have our dividend becomes constant, so that means now sixth year onwards, my dividend becomes constant. So I can say in the seventh year, my dividend will be whatever I am getting in the at the end of sixth year plus 12% of that. Similarly, in the 8th year, whatever I am getting at the end of 7th year plus 12% of that till infinity. So now we have also learned over here when your dividend growth rate becomes constant, we can directly apply the formula and we can directly calculate the present value at that particular point of time. Now our dividend becomes constant at the end of 6th year. So whenever your dividend becomes constant, you can calculate the present value immediately preceding that particular year. So if my dividend is becoming constant at the end of sixth year, I can calculate the value of the share in the stock market at the end of fifth year. We, I have already explained this formula in the previous videos. So I'll refer you to kindly go back to the previous videos to see how I generated this formula. So P5 will be equals to D6 upon KE minus G. D6 we have already calculated to be 18.36. Your KE that means required rate of return is given to be 9%. So we can write it as 0 0.09 and your growth rate that means constant growth rate is 12% which can be written as 0 0.12. Now if I am going to put all these values in the formula it will become like this and your P5 will be $612. So I can say that the value of equity share at the end of fifth year is 612. Now let's put all the values on the number line. So we have already calculated D1 that means the dividend that we paid at the end of year 1 is 11. Dividend that we are going to pay at the end of year 2 is 12.1, D3 was 13.31, D4 was 14.77, D5 16.39 and D6 was 18.36. Plus we have also calculated P5 to be $612. So whenever we have calculated P5, it means that whatever dividend we are going to get after 6th year onwards because the sixth year beyond sixth year my growth rate of dividend is becoming constant so what i have done i have converted all these dividend received that means all these values into the present value which is known as p5 so while calculating the present value of share that means i have to calculate this p0 whatever is the present value of the share prevailing in the stock market so while calculating P0, I don't have to consider all these dividend because I have already converted into P5. Now what is the next step? If I am going to see the next step, these are the values. I am going to get 11 rupees at the end of year 1, 12.1 at the end of year 2, 13.31 at the end of year 3, 14.77 at the end of year 4, 16.39 at the end of year 5 plus dollar 612 at the end of year 5. So now to get the p value I have to convert all these values into the present value. 
I have to convert everything to the present value. This value to the present value, this value to the present value, this value to the present value and this P5 to the present value. Now I am not going to consider beyond this value. Now if you are going to write the equation for all this, it will be P0 will be equals to 11 upon 1 plus r raised to power 1, 12.1 upon 1 plus r raised to power 2 and so on. So let's see how we are going to do it. We are going to solve it with the help of tabular form. Now these are the values at the end of 1, d1, d2, d3, d4, d5 and p5. We have already learned how we have calculated it. So now what we have to do, we have to calculate the present value at the end rate of 9% because the required rate of return which is given in the question is 9%. So let's see how we are going to calculate these values. So we have already learned that if we have to calculate the present value at 9%, so what we have to do, we have to divide 100 by 109. So your first value will become 0 0.917. So you can see these values so first value is 0 0.917. After that you have to press multiply sign and then equals to. Second value you can see it's 84167. So I've rounded off 8, 0.842. Third value is 0 0.772. Fourth is 0 0.708. And at the end of fifth year your value will be 0 0.649. So I round it off to 0 0.650. Since we are getting dividend at the end of fifth year and we are also getting the price of the share at the end of fifth year. So in both these years, uh, my present value factor will be same because these two values belong to the same year. Now the next step is we have to multiply these amount with the present value factor. That means 11 multiplied by 0 0.917, 12.1 multiplied by 0 0.842. 13.31 multiply by 0 0.772, 14.77 multiply by 0 0.708, 16.39 multiply by 0 0.650 and 612 multiply by 0 0.650. Now if you are going to multiply, your values will be this. Once you multiply and you get the values, what you have to do, you have to add all these values. Your answer will be 449.46. So I can say the present value of the equity share which is prevailing in the stock market is dollar 449.461. So this is the question that you have to do. Here it says Mr. X receives a dividend of rupees 12 per share. That means current dividend is rupees 12. Required rate of return is 11.5. You have to calculate the present value of share if the growth rate from first year to fourth year is 11% and fifth and sixth year is 12% and in the seventh year onwards your growth rate becomes 13%. Hope you have understood the concept. For more numericals you can refer my book financial management. Thank you.